In this video, I'll show you some basic skills for working with feathers. We'll need a few supplies. First is a finished hat base, this one's Cinema. Some ordinary scissors. Some heavy duty thread, make sure it's a heavy thread. Some ordinary PVA glue, this is a tacky glue, E6000 will work as well. A millinery wire, this is a 19 gauge, it's rather thick and just so you can see what I'm doing. You'll need wire cutters. You'll need a permanent marker to match your hat base. You will need a little styrofoam block or just something to help you organize the feathers. And of course, feathers. You can work with any kind of feathers and at the end of the video there's some more information about which kind of feathers you should be working with. Oh, for one of the techniques you'll also need a curling iron. Now, using the techniques in this video, we'll take something as simple as a basic pheasant feather and we will turn it into something a little bit more interesting. Using very simple skills, you can achieve something like this easily. I'll be using a basic craft feather. This is a dyed duck feather. You can get it at any basic craft store. Now I'm going to show you how to remove some of the veins, and the veins are the parts that stick out from the main uh, shaft of the quill, which is in the center. And what you need to do is hold above where you want the veins to be stripped and just pull down on the veins. Uh, typically you don't want to keep the fluff, but it's just an aesthetic choice. If you start stripping a dyed feather, you will eventually notice that um, some of the white from the original feather is showing underneath. This is just a, a something that happens when you're dealing with an inexpensive feather. The dye doesn't penetrate the actual material of the quill. What it does is it just rides on the surface. So you can fix that with either something like nail polish or even spray paint. Now I'm going to strip the other side as well. and You can strip both sides, one side, it just depends on the design you want to go with. For this particular design, I'm going to strip all the veins on one side of the feather and leave the other um, remaining veins on the other side. As you're working with the feather, sometimes the veins can separate. All you have to do is just sort of rub them back together and the shape of the actual barbs in the vein will help stick together again. Now for this design, I'm going to give it a little bit of a haircut. Just ordinary scissors. You can start shaping the veins in any way you want. Just make sure that you're cutting at the ends of the veins. The closer you get towards the center quill or the shaft, the more you run the risk of actually cutting a, a chunk out of the veins. Um, if that's the look you're going for, go for it. But I'm going to keep this one pretty simple. You can do the exact same thing with smaller feathers. You just need to pull down from below where you're holding the shaft. I'm going to do both sides on this one. And then simply give the top a haircut as before. 
it can take a very simple, basic feather that you're not really thinking of and make it more dramatic and give it a more interesting shape to work with on your hats. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a guinea fowl feather, and this one's been dyed a sharp yellow color, and I'm just going to strip both sides and shape the top as before. And you can see that even though, again, it's a small feather, you can get a very dramatic shape and a very dramatic look just by giving it a simple little haircut. You can also strip all the veins off the feather and just use the quill. They give a really nice directional line off of a lot of hats. So for this feather, it's just a, a sort of an old turkey feather. What I'm going to do is give it a bit of an interesting haircut. I'm going to take a little from the middle and expose the shaft, leaving veins on the top and the bottom. And what it will do is give it a little stalk with a, with a, oh, let's call it a little pom-pom at the top that will allow you to get a more dramatic shape of a feather. This is kind of a vintagey look, but it does a really nice job of adding a touch of panache to any hat. Now, for this one, uh, the same rules apply. You can trim it symmetrically, you can trim it asymmetrically. I think uh, on this one, I'm just going to go ahead and give it a, a symmetrical haircut below and uh, clean up the top part a little bit. On another example I have in a second, I strip the vein off of one side completely and leave the top to hang off of the shaft. And you can see the feather now has a nice uh, movement to it because of the amount of feather we left on the top of the shaft. And here you can see the other feather quickly. It's just stripped off of one side and basically the exact same effect. Now for this feather, we want to give it a little bit more shape. And the way to do that is to use scissors. Or you can use a butter knife if you have it. It's just like curling ribbon. And if you'll use the force of the scissor against your thumb, and then you can shape the shaft. The harder you do it, the more the shaft curls around. The lighter you do it, the less it curls. So you can get really dramatic spirals if you just keep swirling in. You can also use your scissors in the other direction, and the curl you just made, you can go in an opposite direction and get S-curves or C's or other directions. Now, for this next technique, I'm using a feather with a very flexible shaft. And what I'm going to do is strip all the veins on one side of the feather for this next technique. This next technique will be using the curling iron, so I've had it on the side heating up for a little bit. 
And you can see that if I just use scissors, I can get a curve. It's not a problem. But for what I want, I want something more dramatic than a simple curve I can get with scissors. So what I'm going to do is clamp the tip into the curling iron at the bottom of the curling iron and then carefully space out and spiral the feather shaft against the hot iron. And remember, feathers are made basically of the same stuff as hair. So they will shape and hold shape as long as you have heat applied to it. And I hold this on for about 30 seconds. I kind of cut away here in a second. But um, as long as you hold it on, and remember, you can burn them, so be careful with it. But you can see that once you release it, you get a very dramatic spiral shape that you can then use feathers in the center of or use on its own. And they will separate a little bit, but you can put them back together. If you're using a very narrow vein left on the feather, like in the example I'm about to show you, you can keep them together more. So the wider the vein you leave, eh, the more it's going to separate. But this is a, a pheasant feather that I did the exact same thing to. I just left the veins rather short. Now the styrofoam block is used to hold the feathers. You just poke a little hole in them and then you can store your feathers standing up and they won't get ruined lying on a table. Now we're going to talk about putting the feathers on the actual base. And you can easily just lay it across the base and be done with it, sew it on. But what I want to do is attach wire to this because I want to have this feather sitting on the hat at an angle. And you can't do that just by sewing it directly onto the base. So we need to learn how we can put wire on here to actually get it into a position that we want. So this is a dyed feather and you can see the white underneath it. But um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wire and I'm going to place it about where I want it. And in this case I want it like slightly in the middle of the shaft with a little bit of the quill end uh, exposed and um, plenty of the veins exposed at the top. Now you're going to need some heavy duty thread for this. And I put a little bit of glue on the shaft where I'm going to have the wire attached, but it doesn't actually hold the wire. It just holds the thread in place while I work with it. You're going to place the wire over the thread, and this is on the back of the feather. Make sure that you know which side you want to keep on the front and which side you want to keep on the back. Aim the wire up towards the veins or the top of the feather. And this is a little cumbersome to show on camera, but you're basically going to just start wrapping. And what I normally do is just wrap like some wide crisscrosses just to get the wire to hold in place. And it is a little bit difficult. You have to hold like 10 things at one time. But just wrap lightly for now, and you're going to go all the way down a little bit, like about an inch or so uh, of the wire, because you really don't need that much to hold and support the feather. Now, once you have it sort of lightly wrapped, what you can do is clip off a little bit more of the wire if you left it a little too long. And I'm just clipping off a little bit, so I'm leaving a few inches there because I still need something to hold on to. And now what you're going to do is you're going to wrap tightly one strand next to the other. And you think it might take a long time, but it really doesn't because you're only wrapping about an inch or so. And as you wrap, you're going to keep it very tightly coiled next to each other. And what this is going to do is provide enough friction against the wire and the shaft to keep it together. You're going to continue wrapping um, all the way up to where the wire stops at the top of the shaft. And you're going to go maybe just like an eighth of an inch, maybe not even that, past the wire just to cover that top part. And you'll see me here, I'm pushing the threads together. And once you're done wrapping, you can sort of compress them a little bit more to hide any gaps.
Now, thread the opposite end of the thread onto a needle, and you're just gonna do a couple of invisible knots. You're just gonna go through a few of the threads and make a little knot. Uh, you just have to do a couple of these just to secure them. And then in the end, you just cut the thread end flush with the wrapping. And there you have it. One wire attached to a feather. Now what I'm going to do is angle the wire down a little bit uh, just to get it back on the hat so I can see exactly what position I want it in. Once we sew it, we can adjust it perfectly. I'm going to grab my base here, and um, what I'm going to do is use an awl to poke a very small hole in the cinema to get the wire to go through it. Now, if you're working with a fabric-colored base, use an awl as well. Just go very slowly and don't make the hole too big. You just need the wire to go through it. You're going to insert the wire into the base and get it at the height and relatively close angle that you want the feather to be angled off of. Now what I'm going to do is bend the wire on the inside of the hat base and what that's going to do is brace it against the base and it'll prevent the wire from moving around. Although it's not totally secure at this point, uh, you can see that it's still floppy and wobbly. The next bend we're going to make on the inside of the wire will prevent that from happening. So now we're going to make a U-bend or a V or whatever and I'm just using some pliers to hold the wire and I'm just bending it on the inside. And as I do that, you'll see that it secures the uh, wire coming out of the hat base on the top much better. And you'll see that it's not going to be moving around. So what you want to do is clip off some of the excess wire on the inside, leaving still a significant amount to sew onto. So you see how that little U-bend in there, or a V or whatever works, just a couple of little bends, and it'll easily make sure that that wire stays in place. And now that it's going to be secure with stitching, you can really adjust the feather to get it the shape and angle you want. If it helps, you can put a pin to brace it while you sew it. Just make sure that the pin doesn't uh, damage your fashion fabric to the outside if it is a fabric covered base. So for this, I'm just going to use heavy thread and I'm using white thread for a very specific reason. I didn't necessarily have orange thread and I'm going to show you what to do with that. So I'm just doing a very simple over and under stitch. I'm doing on one side of the wire, go to the outside, come back on the other side. And those little stitches to the outside are enough to hold it. You need to do one about every, oh, I don't know, quarter inch or so around the shape of the U. And when you get to the end of the U, just do a little um, knot to hold it and it will be fine. Here you can see that white stitch, which is going to become completely invisible in just a few minutes. And just continue to stitch all the way around the U, making sure you go up on one side and come down on the other. You want tiny little stitches on this. If you're working with a fabric covered base, you can try just to get the buckram instead of going all the way to the outside. And now here on the end, what I'm going to do is just grab some of the thread from the previous stitches and trying to grab a little bit of the rayon covering on the wire just to make a little knot. And you just need to make one or two little knots here. You don't have to do too many.
Okay, now that your wire has been secured with the stitching, you can cover your stitches with a permanent marker. And this is why if you only have white thread, it works out well, especially if you can find a marker that matches your color base. If not, then I would suggest you really need to use a matching colored thread. Now, the permanent marker will also cover the rayon colored wire. If you only have white, this is fine, especially if you have a permanent marker to cover it with. But if you don't have anything else but black, go ahead and use it. Thin black wire will blend into a lot of backgrounds, and um, you probably won't even notice it's there. Even against a bright color like this orange cinema, the black will kind of just fade into the background. And there you have it. That's your finished wired feather sewn in. Now, you can, if you want to, color the wire on the inside of the hat, but you don't really need to because it'll never be seen. Now continue with the rest of the construction of the hat. Sometimes you also want to create a feather that lays directly against the hat shape, which is perfectly fine. And in this case, what you'll do is sew the feather on directly. You won't put it on any wire. So what you need to do is use a heavy thread again, and preferably again in a matching color or have a permanent marker available. What you can do is a simple stitch that goes just like you did before, over one side, under the other. And you're just crossing over the shaft of the feather and the, the tension you pull on the thread will hold the feather in place. You can also, if you're really worried about it, you could put another little drop of glue right underneath the shaft as it touches the base, but I've never really had to do this, but again, it depends on the feather you're working with. Now, I also, every couple of stitches, I'll do a knot or two, and this is just to help hold those, uh, hold the tension of the thread against the shaft of the feather. And for a, a little feather like this, I'd only do like oh, I don't know, about a couple of sets of stitches. And that's perfectly fine for a feather of this, of this size. If you need to do a big feather that has a thicker shaft, then what you can do is a few more stitches. Just make sure that they're, again, in a matching thread or in white so you can uh, cover it with a permanent marker. You can see that if you sew them on securely, it's not really going to come out. Make sure that that, that thread is very tight and the tension is taut and the feather will stay in place as it lays against the hat. The third way you can attach feathers to a base is to glue them. And this is one of the few times you can actually use glue in millinery, although some milliners use it for a lot of other things. For this particular technique, it's almost necessary. If the feather is small, sure, you can sew it on if you want to. But all I do is just take a, in this case I'm using clear tacky glue, you can also use E6000, put a little bead about the size of the head of a pin, and um, stick it down on where you want it on the hat. And I use a marker or a little dowel rod or something just to tamp it down to make sure that it sticks to the hat. And you see, once it's on, it's on. And then if you let it dry, it'll be there forever. You can have a lot of fun layering small feathers. Um, all you have to do is just sort of, you can build them out like fish scales or any other direction that you want. You can do them radial from the center out, from the outside in, and you can have a lot of fun really just playing with the way the feathers land on the hat and how you adhere them with the glue. And that's it. That's how you glue feathers to a hat base. 
Now, let's talk about the different kinds of feathers you can use. If you can buy it online at a store like The Feather Place or eBay or Etsy or a professional retailer, it's ready to use. If you think you can use feathers you find outside, uh, be very careful. You don't know what kind of species are protected in your area, or you might, and you can't use those feathers even if you wanted to. And besides, you don't know what kind of parasites they have on them. So it's best just to use a purchased feather. Lots of craft stores have them ready to use. Again, they'll be more dyed than anything, but you can still work with that. You can use, like I said, nail polish or spray paint to color the shaft, and you can even use spray paint on the veins if you want a glossy effect. And those are just a few techniques you can use to explore the fun of feathers.